Welcome to the shop. Hope you're having a great day. All right, it's Christmas week and holidays are upon us and all that, so I figured I had to get at least one video out this week. So, uh, hope you and your family are having a Merry Christmas or a Happy Hanukkah or, you know, whatever you celebrate. Or if you don't celebrate, I just hope you guys are having a great time. Anyway, if you watched the last video, I started and designed this knife, so it's time to do the bevels. I'm not going to use my uh, height gauge and all that. I'm going to show you a few new techniques. So, uh, yeah, should be interesting. I got to say, it's been a while. and I'm, I'm a little late this week because I started this. A new prototype for like a compound grind I'm making. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll see it. Plus, I started these two. So, I've just been working on folders. I got that folder bug going on. But, got to get back to this tutorial. Alright, I'll put my website up in the cards. It's the first down in the link. I got Amazon links down there with all the tools I use and all that good stuff. Do me a favor, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. All right, let's just get to it. So I got this all dykeum up and ready. I always do the back so I can lay out, mark it, you know, mark my center lines and all that and know I'm correct before I sit there and mess up the fronts. Now I usually use a, a height gauge like this, but I'm gonna go ahead and use a drill bit. Here's the size, you know, if you want to, you can use the size of your steel, but that's just gonna leave one center line. Before heat treat, you don't want one center line. You want like a, like a third. See, this is like a third of the size. I've already done this on the other two knives just to test it first, but yeah. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna find the small one and I'll show you, but another thing you need is a surface plate. Now check this out. I've got one that I got from Amazon, but I also got a piece that I got from eBay. Here, I'll show you real quick. All right, here's the one I have out here. I bought this off eBay. It's just actually a piece of granite someone surfaced down, and it works perfect. You know, if I need a bigger surface for the bigger knives, I use it. But usually, in my videos and all that, it's covered because my heat treat ovens are right here. <laughs> Which I actually put the door together. I just needed someone to come. I actually ran out of gas, too, on my welder. So I'm going to have someone come after I get some new gas, and then I have this oven up and running and that one. Back to the other plate. So like I said, I already did this on one of my knives, but what you want to do is you take your back of your knife. Let's see, we see it? Yeah. Take the back of your knife and strike it and see where you are. See, that's what I like to do before heat. What I like to do before heat treat is do thirds. So we'll see. Yeah, that's perfect. It's always better before heat treat, because heat treat, you, heat treat, you have a chance to warp. So it'd be, in fact, some people don't even grind bevels before heat treat, but you know, I'm doing hormones on these, so I will. So we just take it on the front, boom. Boom. And there we go. We're almost split in the thirds. It's a little bit thicker than thirds, but that's fine. You know, I hope we can see that. Now we'll just uh, go to the grinder and start beveling. <laughs> right. Yeah, I haven't done the I, I haven't done the drill bit thing since I started. The height gauge, you know, all this stuff, the Dykem height gauge. That's what I'm talking about when I say Amazon links are down in the description. All this stuff is down there. I think I got the service plate, but I'm not sure because they're always changing it. To the grinder. So what we want to do is get an older belt. This is a 50 that I use to grind those other bevels on the folders and stuff. So it's a little worn down. You want to break your 90s, which means you're going to take your knife and put it out a 45 degree angle and come down to your lines. Now the reason we do this is twofold. One is if you put a brand new belt on and you grind into it, you're going to take off half your uh, sandpaper or, or grid or whatever you want to call it and you're just wasting half the bell the other thing is you're going to line up to know where your bevels are coming down to here i'll show you so we're just coming down to the line if you want to hang the belt over a little bit you can whatever but i would suggest hold on i gotta go put a notch in this i forgot my sharpening notch i thought something looked odd <laughs> i'll be back all right there we go I kind of messed it up, but that's all right. 
kind of gives it a unique look. <laughs> that's, the, that's the most important part of knife making. You know how to take something you mess up and make it look good. <laughs> and I almost forgot this part. Take some old calipers. You know, look, this don't even have a battery and broken glass and all that. You know, you can use a scribe if you want. You know, make your own scribe. There's many YouTube videos on how to make scribes. But I'll be honest, I've been using these for forever. <laughs> and just extend them to how you want it. Boom. Scribe your line. Boom. That way you know you're even. You know, unless you're like me and you like building scribes, just build one for the fun of it and see if you like it more. They're easy to build. So back to what I was saying. Yeah, 45, well, it doesn't have to be 45 degrees. You just want it at an angle, and then you're going to come down to your line on both sides. See, and I would stay, here's what I was going to say before I realized I didn't have a notch. Stay in front of your notch. You know, come up here. Even though after heat treat, you're probably going to want to come back here. You know, wherever you want to stop, I would stop ahead of your line. You know, so here's where our plunge line is going to be until after heat treat, stop right here. You don't have to, but I've, I still do it. You know, been making knives for five years and it just seems better. All right, enough rambling, let's get to it. All right, let's get a new 50 or a new 36, whatever you use to start. I just go 50 to 120 and then it's heat treat time. Some people go up to 400. Whatever you find works best for you. All right, new 50. I used to do like 36, 60, 80, 120, or you know, three or four belts just to get to 120 when all you need is a 50 and a 120. Or you know, however you do it. but. I'm telling you, when you start out, you see everyone going belt, 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 belt. When all you need is one, just to hog everything out, and then another one to clean it up, then the heat treat. What you're gonna do, let's see, I'll probably do it like this. <laughs> you don't have a messed up arm, so you don't have to worry about how you hold it this way, but what you're gonna wanna do, is you're gonna grip the knife, you know, get a good grip on it. Put your thumb right here. Here's your line where you want to come down to. You don't want to, you know, press back like that over your line, because then your line, your grind lines are going to come back over your line. You just want to start it out at a reasonable angle, you know, a couple degrees like that. Start it off, give yourself a couple passes. You know, pull it through a few times, get a good grip on the knife. You know, I would say put your thumb right in the middle, put this thumb, let's see. You know, I like to put my finger over here and use this thumb. You know, like I say, these thumbs dictate where your line's gonna be. Now, if you pull back, you're gonna go full flat. So you're just gonna have to kind of pull it in and pull it. You know, I would, if it's your first grind, knife grinding, just pull it straight through. See how that feels. As you go, you can start pulling it out. Or if you want to, you can start pulling it down, but that, pulling it down but I don't know that's <laughs> whatever you want to do but just get your grip and, and kind of get your bearings and pull it through a few times to see how it feels and then you can move your thumbs down you know as you move your thumbs down you're going to kind of pull back and you're going to pull down I hang my belt over because I like my plungers to swoop 
If you want them straight up and down, keep it straight with the platen and they'll go straight up. It's up to you. It's another thing. See, the key, the, I, I've had this new philosophy about everything in life. People contact me and like, why, why aren't my knives getting better? Why, why, why can't I make a good knife? Man, it's just time. Anything you want to learn, you just got to take the time and learn it. And, and put in that, 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 that grunt time, you know, where everything turns out like shit. You know, you look at other knives makers. If someone says, I've only been making knives a couple of months and they've come out great, they're lying to you. Or they got extremely lucky and their next knife won't be as nice. Believe me, people love to lie about how skilled they are. That's why I just do these videos because, man, you can see how much I mess up even after years and years of practice. Like me with cameras, go back and watch some of my uh, videos from like two or three years ago. They're horrible. They're real bad. But I've gotten a lot better. The music is better. Everything. Anyway, that's it. If you want to be a better knife maker, stick with it and put in the time. <laughs> Video over. I can stop there. <laughs>
I can come up here. I usually leave a little gap. I don't know what I did there. I lost concentration for a second. I must have hit it. But uh, yeah, I always leave it a little bit below the line and then uh, bring that on 120 or maybe sometimes I don't want it above the line. But look, we got a little problem like this. <laughs> and you have OCD, you can cheat a little bit. What mess up? Shit, I didn't mess up. <laughs> All right, we're just gonna do the same on this side. In fact, you guys probably don't have a messed up arm, so just the same thing on both sides. Try to repeat. Every person is different. Some people like to start with their strong hand. Some people start with their weak hand. I used to think this was my weak hand, but sometimes I think this is my strong hand. and it's, I go back and forth, but try it. You know, one person, whatever your dominant hand is, try starting with the other hand and then matching it with the good hand. <laughs> that, don't do that too much because you'll, you'll warp your blade and you'll make it all out of line. That, you know, if you, if you mess up a little bit, that's a good way to fix it. If you mess up a lot, you might want to start over. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, we all mess up. It, it's, it's part of it. Before I forget, I'll show you the shape and design. I'll put the video up. It'll actually be the whole playlist, but since there's only two videos now, it'll only be this one and that one. And that one will be first. <laughs> All right, back to grinding. Man, it was doing good and then it started burning. You'll see me go like this. You'll even see me, you might even see me dip my thumb if I remember to keep it in. Instead of the knife, I dip my thumb. <laughs> All right, we're getting close, so. Actually, yeah, I'm just gonna go re them this and uh, put 120 back on up. Uh, well, I'll, I'll be back with 120. This side's a little higher than this side. I cheated again. I just turned the camera off and said, that's good enough. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so now we got a 120. See, so this 50 now for me goes in the pile of shaping. It's still got grit on it, so I can use it for breaking 90s next time or shaping or whatever I need to do. Here we go, same idea. We're just refining the grinds. That's why I say you really only need two belts. Do you want to do 36 and 80? Whatever. And here's a trick I always say, uh, like say I did this side already and I'm worried about having my grind lines match up. See how these are straight up and down? They'll be straight up and down here. Cause I used to grind, let's see how did I used to grind? I used to grind like this. So my grind lines would be like that. So to flip it over, I'd have to straighten it up and have a grind line like that. You know, try little things, you know, maybe you like your grind lines coming in a separate way or a different way or, you know, like I say, it's all about practice and finding what you like, finding your groove and just not giving up. It's what makes a good knife maker not giving up, but it's what makes a good anything, just sticking with it.
We're pretty close. This is before heat treat anyway. I could go back over here and, and bring it up to the line like it is here, but we're good. We're still on our lines here. And uh, I'll meet you over at the drill press. Actually, I'll meet you at the bench, then the drill press. I don't know if you follow me on Instagram, but this weekend I got the camera done and the tattoo finish. He's thickened up the invader. But uh, man, he did a real awesome job. <laughs> so the camera's spitting out music, which turns into knives. <laughs> the rose I got when I was 15 years old, my mom walked in, signed the papers, because I did a bunch of tattoos with a needle and thread. But anyway, let's get to this. I got all these ground out too, all these bevels looking good. So these will get all clayed up. Been a while since I did a compound grind, but I pulled it off. Love me some compound grinds. Enough showing off. <laughs> now I'll be honest here with this. Uh, when it comes to these, basically I eyeball it, you know, like a center here. Well, first of all, what I'll do is I'll draw how I want my handle to come down. Yeah, my handles usually always look like that. So this one will be like right here. Then I have a lanyard hole right here. And another hole like right here. Is that right? And you can always use the uh, acetone to wipe them off. Let's see how close I was to center. <laughs> All right, we'll break an inch. So, whoo, dead center. Look at that bad boy. It's a little bit bigger than an inch. So I'm breaking in the middle of these two and bam, half is right there. Just show it off. <laughs> to the drill press. All right, so what I usually do is I use these centering bits. Uh, some people use a, you know, a punch, but uh, I raced my friend a long time ago from start to finish. You know, the punch is a lot faster. You know, it takes longer to set up, but punch, sometimes you're off a little bit and stuff like that, so yeah. See, they're just little bits. Boom, you just put them in. Then I always use one, two, three blocks to drill through, just tap them off. You just, you don't want to go all the way through. It's just like a punch just to get started. If you want to use a punch, use a punch. I just like this way. Um, then I'll spray it down with some hogwash or, you know, put some drilling oil in there, whatever you want to use. Here's a tip I learned from uh, Niels Vandenberg, Black Dragon Forge. Put a chain on your, uh, on your key, you never lose it. And I just saw a, a post from a guy, he tried to catch it, catch his knife after helicoptering, and that's what this is. It's just if you're... You know, if your knife gets away from you, it hits this instead of spinning out of control. I buy these quarter inch in bulk because I use quarter inch for everything. <laughs> in fact, I'm down to a couple. I have to order some more. Line up the one, two, three block. thing is, your drill bit wants to find center, unless you're using end mills or something. So if you kind of just hold it loose, hold it loose but tight. <laughs> hold it kind of loose, but make sure you got a firm grip on that. It'll find the center of this hole. That makes sense. And if it gets out of control, let it go so it hits one of something. You know, anything to put here to stop. You can even use like a clamp. Go to Home Depot and buy some clamps like that. Something just to stick up to catch it. 
Now I'll just go hit it on the grinder real smooth to get the spurs down and uh, meet you back at the bench. Boom, I got it all painted up, ready for heat treat tomorrow. Now I'm not gonna show the heat treat or do a video on the heat treat. I got a whole playlist which I'll put up in the cards and at the end screen I'll put the playlist there too. But uh, yeah, I got all these grinds looking perfect and all covered up and painted up ready for tomorrow. If you watch me on Instagram, you already heard this joke, but I feel like a damn Christmas tree showing this. <laughs> so, anyway, Merry Christmas. This will probably be the last time I see you before uh, next week. So, hope you and your family have a good one. All that good stuff. I'll make sure to put my website up in the cards. It's the first down in the description, along with all the Amazon links I use. I got shirts on my website. I got a few knives. The two folders might still be up there, too. Do me a favor, comment, let me know what you're doing for your holidays or how it's going. Uh, hopefully everyone's happy and we get on to the next year and things start to get better. Make sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell. Like I said, I'm going to put uh, heat treating videos right here. A whole playlist. All you need to know about heat treating. I'll put the last video, which will be a playlist here. Let's see, I'll put my website right there. Subscribe is right there. Hope you all are having a great day and a great holidays. As always, take it easy.